Hiya folks, Doc here. The weather outside is frightful and inside the shop it's warm and delightful because I've got the wood stove stoked up. I'm going to shoot a little video for you today. This is another episode of Doc's Dirt Cheap DIY and the topic matter for today is test lights. I do a lot of troubleshooting for people online. I used to do it by PM and it just got a little bit crazy. Uh, so I basically had to stop doing that. But in the various forums and groups, um, there's a lot of troubleshooting questions being asked on a regular basis. A lot of them are electrical. And electricity is a bit of a kind of a phantom to some people who don't really understand it, which is fine. I mean, eventually, you know, you either get it or you don't. And a lot of people do eventually. That's okay. The problem is, is in the process of helping somebody troubleshoot their electrical issue, I invariably ask, do you have a multimeter or a test light? And they invariably say, no. Trying to troubleshoot without a multimeter or a test light is a lot like poking around in the dark. You might hit the right hole eventually, but it's going to be ugly. Anyways, here today I'm going to show you some multimeters ranging in price and capability. Just gloss over them quickly. I'm going to show you basic test lights, and I'm going to show you how to make your own test light out of crap you already have laying around for the price of absolutely Zippo. And that will completely negate your, I don't have a test light, because you have this junk laying around or something like it. You can make one of these. It's going to cost you absolutely nothing. You know, no parts or tools are harmed in the process, and you have a test light. So stick around, and I'll show you what I've got cooked up, okay? Okay, so what I've got on the bench here is some pretty basic stuff here. Uh, just kind of hit them in sequence. I'll show you the meters first. I've actually got five or six multimeters, and I mean, one doesn't need five or six multimeters, but I'm just that guy. Um, so let's start with this one here. Uh, this is my Beckman, and I've had this one since college. I took an electronics course in college, and I got myself a really decent multimeter. And... Uh, this is it. It's It's got a whole bunch of functions. Most of this stuff you don't need to know anything about. Um, but it, it's, it's a handy little bugger. Uh, this one here I got from Canadian Tire. And I think this one cost me 25 bucks or so a couple of years ago. I actually ended up with two of these and I can't even remember why. But I've got two identical of these. Uh, this one here came from Princess Auto and I paid like next to zilch for it and I only picked this one up because it had uh, a thermal probe on it which is really an interesting feature and handy for working on engines and stuff like that. It's a contact probe so you plug it in down here, you put it on the thing, it reads the temperature and you're good to go. Uh, these are your basic test leads and uh, operation is really really simple. You just plug them into the meter in the appropriate locations Set the multimeter to the range. Uh, in this case, uh, 20 volts DC. A lot of meters have that as a set range. 20 volts there, 20 volts there. And, you know, if you're reading, for example, a lawn tractor's electrical system, 20 volts will cover it. Um, so turn the meter on. Let me just set the little kickstand here so you can see what's going on. And as you can see, I've got a battery over here. And we're just going to touch the leads to the battery. To demonstrate that it's reading the battery voltage and it's that simple I mean if you're trying to figure out why a circuit's not working and you know you put the probes to where it ought to go and it's reading nothing or next to nothing or way too low you know you may have just found your problem anyways those are the meters pretty simple pretty straightforward you don't need a fancy one this five dollar one from Princess Auto or Harbor Freight or whatever you can get is more than sufficient and uh, what I have here <laughs> what I have here is a tangled mess. <clears throat> this one here is a little probe I picked up for cheap. And it just plugs into the meter like all the other probes. It's just a little banana plug on the other end. And it's got a really sharp point on the end here. And this is really good for back probing connectors. So you don't even necessarily have to take a connector apart to get a voltage reading off it. So 9 times out of 10 when you're using one of these things just to do a voltage test somewhere, you would very simply put you know, your ground probe, you know, right to the battery ground, and then just use your positive probe to read around and figure out what's going on. So that's it for the meters. 
Here I have a couple of test lights and these things can be had really cheap, you know, as cheap as three or four dollars. Uh, now obviously being in Canada I don't have Harbor Freight so I can't give you an exact Harbor Freight, you know, price or part number without getting online and doing the research that you can do. Uh, but I got both of these from Princess Auto for pretty cheap. I've got a third one kicking around somewhere, but that's the story of my life. Everything's kicking around somewhere. Anyways, it basically consists of a see-through body or a window and a probe. And again, these are usually fairly sharp so that you can back probe a connector and usually an alligator clip on the other end. Now, the fact that this alligator clip has a red covering is entirely inconsequential. It doesn't mean this is positive. Test lights have no polarity. So if what you're doing requires you to clip this to positive and probe around for a ground, you can do that. If it needs to be the other way around, you can do that too. They're not like LEDs, they read in both directions. So, you know, just as a demonstration, I can clip that onto the battery and I can do this and it shows you, okay, you know, I've got power in that circuit and just to show you the polarity doesn't matter, I've reversed it, no issue. And of course the other test light does exactly the same thing, you know, you can even tell it looks similar. Uh, Good to go, no problem there. Uh, this test light here, as a matter of fact, actually is an LED, uh, but what they've done is they've set up the circuit inside the test light, that polarity doesn't matter. That's, uh, that's a bit of an electronics thing that you know goes beyond the scope of what we need to discuss right now. Now, let's get into the DIY stuff. Now this is a little test light indicator that I made back when I was in school. So this goes back quite a long time. And at the one end, and I'll just zoom in really close, it's literally a couple of rivets connected to the wire, soldered to the wire, electrical tape wrapped around black and red so that I can tell the polarity, and I'll get to that in a second, and some wires. Should have made them longer, but I didn't really need them to be longer. And I just used a little, I think this was a bead box or something like that. My mother used to be into beads, and I got a bunch of these little plastic boxes off her. And, uh, you know, they're handy for putting little electronic projects in. So, as you can see by the cover here, you know, uh, I've got DC correct polarity marked with a couple of green LEDs, and DC incorrect polarity marked with a couple of red LEDs, and then I've got them both marked as AC. And the way this little gizmo works is that if I am testing an unknown circuit, let's see if I can keep this in camera range. Okay, so that's indicating that it is a DC signal, but I've got the polarity backwards. Okay, so we'll switch the leads and do one of these. All right, DC circuit, and I've got the polarity correct. So I'm holding the negative in my right hand. This is the negative terminal of the battery. Now, I will actually demonstrate the AC function for you in a moment. Uh, first, I'll take an opportunity to crack the cover. These hinges are long gone. There's not much in here. I used a piece of a circuit board some LEDs I had kicking around, a resistor to drop the voltage because 12 volts will blow the shite out of these LEDs, <laughs> some hot glue and some pieces of resin plastic just holding the circuit board close to the screen, if you want to call it a screen. And that's all there is to it. Absolutely nothing fancy. So as you know, uh, a diode, and an LED is a diode, will allow current in only one direction, which is why I said to you earlier, you know, don't use an LED as a test light because it'll only read one way, and if you got it backwards, you'll get a false negative. Uh, <clears throat> so basically what's going on here is I've got the green LEDs hooked up in one polarity and the red LEDs hooked up in the other polarity. So depending on which way the current's going through the box is which LEDs light up. If you have an AC signal, it will light a diode because half of the signal waveform is going in the correct direction. When are you going to use an AC signal on a lawn tractor? The answer to when you're going to see AC on a lawn tractor is in two places, depending on your lawn tractor. Uh, the lighting circuit is one. Uh, if you have the charging system where it's unregulated and you've just got a little diode on the DC charge wire, well, the other wire is your lighting circuit and that's AC. Or if you have a regulated charging system with a regulator rectifier such as this one here, it takes in an AC signal from the alternator stator and rectifies that to DC. So this here is the charge wire. This is DC coming out of the regulator rectifier. Everything downstream of this is going to be DC signal. However, this connector right here is the AC signal signal coming out of the alternator stator. That's AC. Uh, if you 
try and have a multimeter set to DC and read that, it's not going to read. Now, I already know it's AC, so I don't need to test for this, but if I didn't know it was AC, I could use my little gizmo box here to tell me that. Let me demonstrate. That simple. Okay, so having shown you my little homebrew LED polarity indicator, um, we're going to trip back over the bench here and I'm going to show you how you can make your own test light with crap you have kicking around, no cost. From this point forward, there's no excuse for you not to have a test light. You have something you can use. I know you do. Alright, so here's one example of a homebrew DIY test light that cost absolutely nothing. Um, Parts are as follows. I've got an automotive tail light bulb here and an alligator clip that I found. You can get these in all kinds of shapes and sizes and dimensions. And a nail. That's right, just a construction nail, a framing nail. And some random wire I had kicking around. And generally speaking, exactly how you do it is up to you. I find the best setup usually is a clamp on one side and a probe on the other, you know, leaving one hand free. Um, as you saw with my little LED polarity indicator, it's hard to hold the thing and the two probes. And Well, either way, if you can come up with an alligator clip of some kind, and I'm sure you can, you know, they, they, they can be found, it'll make your life easier. So all I did, and I mean, I've got this taped up here just so it doesn't short off anything. Uh, you don't even have to actually solder them if you're really handy with the tape. But I bared a piece of wire about this long, wrapped it around the socket, and I soldered that on. You don't have to, but of course I like reliable connections. Uh, and then the contact on the bottom of the bulb. Uh, this is an 1157 bulb, so there was actually two contacts. doesn't matter. I bridged them both. And you can either tape the heck out of it or glue it or preferably solder it. There's already lead there for the contacts. Just solder it. makes your life a lot easier. But just, again, really, really simple. <clears throat> there you go. Incandescent light. Polarity doesn't matter. Poof. So this is one such example of a no-cost test light. Now, I've got this trailer light here that I'm not going to use. Uh, I bought a pair of them for a project, decided they weren't going to work for me, and then I helped a buddy repair his trailer. He had a smashed out marker light. Now I only have one of these. So we're going to make a test light out of a trailer light and a screwdriver. No special tools required, no soldering, no nothing. All right, so I've got fancy electrical strippers and crimpers and stuff like that. I'm not going to use any of that. Uh, I'm just going to use, you know, what your average DIY guy might have kicking around. Uh, so <clears throat> we've got your trailer light, your screwdriver. I've got an alligator clip here. These things actually I picked up might have been on Amazon. I forget, but somebody was selling, I think they were roach clips. They had little plastic handles on them that are pretty much dirt useless or they were selling them for a little holder clamp clips or some shite like that. Anyways, I just pulled the plastic handle off because, you know, alligator clips are alligator clips. And uh, I've got a couple of zip ties, electrical tape, random piece of wire, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and turn this into a DIY test light. So I'm going to strip both ends of the wire. And we're going to attach one end to our trailer light and get that taped up so it doesn't short out. Obviously I'm kind of doing this in a hurry in front of the camera. You can do a cleaner, neater job. Doesn't much matter. <clears throat> Anyways, we'll get that all wrapped up on there. A little bit of excess. Who cares? All right. So the thing with these trailer lights is that they ground through their mounting. So you'll see this steel grommet here, and inside, if you were to pop the lens off, you would see that is actually the ground, and it goes to the base of the light bulb. So that's kind of important there. And uh, what we're gonna do to complete that ground is this little wad of tin foil. 
So uh, first off, let's just finish up with the wiring. Just gonna kind of make a little bit of a knob out of that, insert it into the back of the alligator clip, and just use a pair of pliers to crimp it down. All right, cool, that's done. Uh, we're gonna take a little bit of tin foil here. Just kind of wad it up. This does not have to be beautiful, it just has to be a lump of something conductive. And I'm just gonna prepare my zip ties here just to make my life a little bit easier when I go to assemble this. I haven't tried this before, so this is all live, okay? <laughs> Anyways, uh, focusing on this little metal grommet, um, we're going to trap the tin foil in there and set the screwdriver on it and grab a zip tie. I'll just get that to hold. I'll do the same thing with this one here. There we go. And just so that these things aren't getting in your face, slip those off. Okay, so what we have here is a no buck DIY test light. Let's try it out. Look at that. Poof. Presto bingo. Took me, what, 30 seconds to make? Works like a charm. Polarity doesn't matter. Parts you already have kicking around. And no tools or parts were harmed in the process. I can totally take this apart and uh, <laughs> put the light back on my trailer. That easy. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Doc's Dirt Cheap DIY and found it useful and informative. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you once again for watching and subscribing and sharing and uh, wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And until next time, take care of yourself. Just. <laughs> <laughs>